Welcome back to His and Hers Movie Podcast. This is episode number 66, featuring a review of the fifth and supposedly final Purge film, also known as The Forever Purge, or is The Purge Forever? Forever Purge. Forever Purge. It's not The Forever Purge? Uh, I think it, I think it might be The Forever Purge. That sounds better. Yes. Anyway, I am one half of your hosting duo, JP. I am podcasting on this July 4th, Independence Day, 2021, out of Southwest PA. And joining me tonight, as always, well, it's now the 5th, but joining me tonight, as always, is Carly, a.k.a. Carly Swingerton. (laughs) <laughs> what? <laughs> I you swing. Like swing at night. Yeah, I fucked around and swing at night. Dude, that was fun. Yeah. I didn't even know there there wasn't a swing set down there before. That's new. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Last time I was down there, there wasn't. Yeah, well, yes, it is the 5th of July now. You and I had a pretty decent uh, 4th of July weekend, though. So. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, so, yeah, we did a lot of stuff, man. I mean... We met some people, we hung out with some people, it was good times, uh, had by all. Yes, we had, basically we had a Living Dead weekend this weekend, which is a little convention, pretty pretty tiny, you know, compared to other conventions, but they do it at Monroeville Mall, aka the Dawn of the Dead Mall, aka a mall that is about an hour away from us, and... Yeah, you know, it's like any other convention. They get peeps there. Uh, Mainly they try to get, like, people, like, related to George Romero films or, like, zombie films because that's kind of, like, the big thing around here. So they had, like, a Return of the Living Dead reunion and Day of the Dead reunion and then some other random people from, like, the Dawn of the Dead movies, stuff like that. Uh, You had, like, Tom Savini and whatnot there as well. And it's just a little convention, and we went on Friday and sat, and yeah, we, you know, had a pretty good time. We spent a lot of doll hairs. I think you and I both kind of went, like, all out this time around, because we've been to other conventions, but I feel like we've never bought as much stuff as we bought at this one before, which was, you know, fun. Like, it's scary spending that much money, but at the same time, that is what we were there for, so. Uh... But, yeah, I spent about five hundred dollars. Not gonna lie. Yeah, I probably spent like two fifty, which is that's all the money I brought, pretty much. Um, I mean, and then you gave me money for the tickets, so it's like that replenished a little bit. But I mean, <laughs> and then I spent that. But yeah, I spent a lot. I usually usually I'll like bring too much money, but this time it's like I spent pretty much everything I had. But I, you know, took that much money out of the bank just for this occasion, so it's not like I was breaking the bank by doing that. But we bought some moves and some posters. I bought a winning light switch thingy. And uh, it is, of course, uh, Felissa Rose's peep uh, from Hmm. Sleepaway Camp. And I thought that was a good purchase. Um, Yeah, um, we'll get into it. We'll get into it. We're going to give a recap of that. Um, but yeah, let's, let's, uh, since this is probably going to be a little bit long, um, you know, let's go ahead and get into what we watched. Then we'll talk about Living Dead Weekend. Or do you want to talk about Living Dead Weekend now? What do you think? Well, as you could see, I was talking about (laughs) Living Dead Weekend now. I know, but you were going all out of order and stuff. Now, I was just going on about stuff, buddy. It doesn't have. This is why our pod go like. This is why we don't have quickies because you think everything needs to be broken down into this big dramatic thing. When really, you, you could give the Relax. gist of stuff. I didn't want to give the gist of it. But sometimes people don't want to listen to you talk. It's when? Meaning myself. Okay. Well. Okay. I guess we'll talk about. Living Dead Weekend, which we normally don't, we normally do as like a co-main event, but we'll just go with it now. So, um, Living Dead Weekend, like you said, it's it's a little bit of a smaller convention. This is our second time going. Uh, last year they did not have one. 
this this actual convention was supposed to take place last year, like the same thing, same uh, type of people there and stuff. This was like a Return of the Living Dead slash Day of the Dead reunion type thing. Um, they had probably what three, four, five, five or six people from uh, Return of the Living Dead, and then another handful. Uh, mo- mostly zombies from Day of the Dead, yeah. and also you figure probably about um, like three or four of the cast members. Obviously, um, two of the cast members from Day of the Dead passed on, which is kind of sad. Um, but yeah, it was really really cool to have these people there. And the cool thing about having some Return of the Living Dead people there is, like, two of those people were also in Friday the 13th movies. Yeah. Being Tom Matthews as well as, um, Miguel Miguel. Nunes. Uh, so, yeah, we, we went there on Friday and Saturday. We didn't go Sunday, but Friday and Saturday, um, we went, um, Friday, we decided we were just gonna, like, scope the place out and not meet anybody, we were just going to, you know, buy some posters, buy some movies, you know, talk to some people, just check out what it all had to offer, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So we uh, basically went to, like, all the little booths and stuff like that. This time, which was cool because last time I don't think they had a movie vendor there. Uh, yeah, I don't think they did. Yeah, but this time they had the guys from Severn Films there. Mm. And I thought that was really, really cool. So you got Severn Severn Films, um, which is, honestly, I spent about $160 at their table between the two days. Yeah. Um, It was just so fun to talk to those guys, and I was like, like, I really just liked a lot of the releases they had Mm -hmm. um, that, that I've been meaning to pick up. Uh, especially like one was uh, Blood on Satan's Claw, which is, uh, I believe, out of print from them, and they told they told me that like these were like the last couple copies, which was limited to three thousand units. Um, so I'm pretty sure that that's what they said, which I kind of forgot all about that one. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they had Deep Blood, which I needed because. Uh, I pre-ordered that from Amazon and just they canceled my order. That's happened like three or four times with Severin or Vinegar Syndrome titles, which is super annoying. Um, picked up like two of the Severin Kids titles that I've always wanted, which is When the Wind Blows and um, Peanut Butter Solution. Uh, also grabbed St. Bernard, Wax Mask, uh, The Hills Have Eyes 3, or AKA Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. I think it. I think it was under both of those titles, uh, which is um, Night Killer, which is I believe a Claudio Fregasi Fregasso movie, um, who of course did Troll Two. Uh, yeah, this movie's ridiculous. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, so I picked up those. Also, those were the first day. I picked up wax, wax mask. Uh, the second day, I don't remember what I grabbed. They're not in front of me. Um, one was like that VIY movie or VIN or something. I forget what it was. It was like a folk horror film. Mm. Uh, and then there was like two other titles that I picked up. Um, don't remember what they are, though. Do you? No, I didn't really pay attention to what you got the second day, honestly. Mm, I see. Uh, peanut butter solution was one. Oh, you got Patrick still lives. Oh yeah, because they didn't mm-hmm. have that out the first day, and I was like, oh, I gotta get this. <laughs> this is gonna be so ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, so I picked that up, and then yeah, so we spent a lot of money there. You grabbed some stuff too. You grabbed a lot of the same titles as me. I think you grabbed Saint Bernard, Night Killer, Deep Blood, Cruel Jaw, or did you grab Deep Blood? Or no? Oh, I got. I will. I shall explain what I've got. <laughs> I got. Um. I got, yeah, I got Cruel Jaws, I got Night Killer, I got, uh, uh, what did I get? I got Kathy's Curse, I got Invasion of the Blood Farmers. That was a cool um, one. Yeah, and then I got those two, which I forget what they're actually called, but they're like, it's like some documentary thingy, um, 
of like basically taboo scenes, I guess, from like 60s and 70s movies that I thought was cool. And the guys were super nice. And the one dude was like, I'm going to throw in the other one we did too. And he just gave it to me for free. So yeah, those guys were like super, super dope. But yeah. And for me, they uh, like, I think the first day I was like, you know, um, just talking to them like just about their releases and like what movies they liked and stuff like that and um it was fun like they were really 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 willing to talk and just bull bullshit a little bit about you know the films they released and things like that i could have talked to those guys forever and then like the second day and i dropped a hundred bucks that day and then the second day i came back it was right at the end and i was like you know what i'm just gonna spend i think i had like 60 bucks left and i was like i'm gonna just spend the rest of this um and go out with a bang and i picked up a couple more titles and i think like when they see me come back and drop like more money i think they're like man this guy this guy's really spending a lot of money here um and i had mentioned earlier that i liked intervision their intervision titles and uh the guy went and found a pin an intervision pin and gave it to me for free which i thought was like super cool um and then towards the end he asked me if i wanted a t-shirt and he gave me an extra large uh severin shirt mm. which i usually wear large but i can fit extra large it's just a little bigger um but you know especially around like thanksgiving or something i'll definitely fill that baby out yes <laughs> you become a little husky sometimes um right? yeah but they were so cool you know they were just they were awesome man they were just great dudes i had fun with them um i just really enjoyed hanging out at that 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 was actually one of the highlights of my thing was just chilling with the severin guys and talking about their releases and stuff mm. um and then so that's what we did the first day and and we went and found there was like i had a goal there from like two years ago when we went there was this guy that had these posters that were really cool they were like these metallic like holographic type posters they were little 11 by 17 uh posters and like the popular movies they had like shiny like these they had regular 11 by 17 posters but the, like the popular movies they had these shiny versions and I had bought two years ago Friday the 13th part 7, 8, and 9 with those posters just because I, I thought those ones were the most unique like the I Love New York one was awesome and Jason Goes to Hell and I figured well these ones will probably not have that many of them so people you know they might just they might not be there and in fact two of those three were not there this time um but I always was like, man, I would love to get the rest of those from that guy if I ever go back, if I ever see him again. So we ended up finding him again, and I got part two, three, four, five, and ten of Friday the 13th. So I only need one and six, which he didn't have either of those. So I basically hounded him to see if he had them and he would uh, he said he he thinks he does and he would bring them to the next thing which is still city con in august so now i gotta go still to still city con specifically for that right right um but then i also went back and bought more posters because i thought they were so damn cool i bought elm street uh one two four and five and i already have elm street three that i bought last that that other time so yes yes uh those posters are pretty cool um i bought some as well i usually just get three and that's what i did this time too i got phantasm nightmare on Elm street part two and uh friday seven so oh, and i got phantasm <laughs> oh yeah yeah i forgot yeah you got that too yeah um, i actually i'm like i have a lot i mean there was a couple more i wanted like i i do want to get um elm street six if he has one the the uh, and freddy versus jason as well oh, yeah. uh, but other than that i mean i'm pretty happy with the ones i have uh there was some other cool ones that i did like like uh what was another one i think there was a scream one that i thought about buying mm -hmm. um, but the scream poster is not very good <laughs> yeah that's why i never get it yeah 
Um, but like Phantasm, Phantasm Two, Phantasm. They had a Phantasm Three. I would like some Texas Chainsaw Massacre ones, but it's like, dude, I love. I think that if I could, I would not own any big posters, and I would only buy the eleven by seventeen ones because you can fit so many more. more. I think Dave Z has talked about that. You can fit so many more of them, mm -hmm. like on your wall. Like I could literally put six Friday Thirteenths in this one spot. In, instead of two other posters yeah um and yeah i think i'm i think i don't know where the hell i'm gonna put these but i want all i want all 10 all uh what is it 10 friday 13th that i have it well i need to get one and six first but uh i'm definitely gonna put them on a wall somewhere i don't give a damn i'll make space for them um, <laughs> I would have so much space if I didn't have so many movies because they take up wall space, you know? Uh, I am thinking if I can move those VHS, I could put another couple over there too. So yeah. I could do that as well. Yeah. Um, uh, all right. But anyway, so that's that. We bought some posters. You bought a sleepaway camp light switch, which shows Angela standing there naked and where the penis would be. That's where the like light switch part would go it's like a yeah. light switch cover yeah i bought it from uh that time bomb toys uh they come they're like local to pittsburgh they have like an actual shop in pittsburgh like in the city i guess and um they sell mainly they sell like figures and stuff like that masks and everything and i kept seeing ads on facebook actually for that light switch just from them mm -hmm. and i was like I kind of want that, I kind of want that, and then we went there, and I got that. A few years ago, when I first went to, like, Still City Con, someone sold a bunch of light switch covers, like, horror and stuff, and I bought that Carrie one that I have in my, you know, the move room, my random mm -hmm. room, and uh, I would like to get more light switch covers and have them for every room, but I never saw that person again that, like, was selling just, like, plain light switch covers, but now yeah. I have two, and... I like this Angela one. It's funny. Yeah, no, it is funny. It's really cool. Um, and then uh, I think that was pretty much all we did day one, other than the fact that we were, like, about to leave and it started raining. And I was like, there's a movie theater next to the mall. Or no, did we play it's pool this day, too? Oh, yeah, we played pool. Yeah, they had a pool hall thing there, and we went and played a game of pool, which... You suck horribly bad, and I suck pretty bad because I haven't played in so long. But as you noticed, I, the more I played, like the like, like the longer I played, it, it got a little bit better. Um, and we played a game of pool, and I think it was like five dollars each for thirty minutes, and like we blew through that thirty minutes and didn't even finish the first game. <laughs> we yeah. barely finished in time. Um, so. We both suck at pool, but that was fun. And we were going to leave, and it was raining, and there's a movie theater across the, uh, across the parking lot, and I was like, you can walk through the mall to get to it. And I was like, why don't we see if The Purge is playing tonight? And uh, it was Friday, and there was a showing at like 8.10, and it was like 7.50. So I was like, yeah. let's go see The Purge and set, so we ain't got to walk in the rain. <laughs> And then we went over there and got tickets to see The Purge, and we watched it, and we'll tell you about it later. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, we, but I mean, that was like, it was like killing two birds with one stone, because you figure we were going to have to see The Purge anyway to do it for the pod. We at least one had planned to, so while we were out there, might as well. But then it was like super late, <laughs> like we got out of there, and it was, I didn't even, think, you know, it's like past 10 p.m like 10 30 so we got home pretty late that night but mm -hmm. but then whatever. you know um we we slept we got some sleep uh we woke up the next morning we had a sandwich incident which shall not be <laughs> talked about um and then we we ventured out to day number two and the cool thing about day number two is a longtime listener and friend of 22 shots uh rob from georgia um actually was going to be in the area like he, i think he was he has family about two and a half hours away or three hours away mm -hmm. and he was going to be in the area and reached out to me and i was like well i'm going to be at this convention why don't you come down to this 
And so he did. And we met him. We got lunch at the food court. Um, I got a Philly cheesesteak and some cheese fries, which is really good. The cheese fries were much better than the Philly cheesesteak. Uh, cheesesteak was a little bland, not going to lie. It was called Charlie's. Um, and you got pizza, a stromboli, and baked ziti. Yeah, I like... I Are you a it. fan of baked ziti? Yeah, I am. Why do you hate why? it? Why? I don't know why people like it. What do you mean? It's just noodles. Like, what? It's noodles and sauce. So is the fucking spaghetti. But spaghetti's better. Cause no, it's not. Too. Ziti's, like, way better. Ziti <laughs> I don't has, like, like ziti noodles either, really. I don't like spaghetti noodles, so... But it's got, like, cheese and stuff and sauce, and it's good. I don't know. I just got it, and, uh... Yeah, the stromboli, I just got a pepperoni stromboli, and that was pretty good. And then I know Rob and his son both got Subway, so we all kind of did that, and then we met at a table, and Rob was a pretty nice dude. Yeah, no, it was very fun to talk to him, and, um, um, you know, it, it, it was, it was, it was, uh, it was pretty cool. You know, meeting him and, and his son, Sam, who was really cool. Yeah. Um, And we, you know, hung out and, and talked for a bit, and it was a good time. It was very, very interesting to meet somebody who, you know, you've talked to on the podcast forums and different stuff for years. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I really appreciated that. That was very fun. We got some pictures and stuff, and then we met another person that you knew who I, I, I apparently... I'm actually friends with him on... I was already friends with him on Facebook. I just didn't know who he was. Yeah, uh, Josh James. Um, he's He was always commenting on my stuff, saying, like, he's, like... He, he's actually from New Jersey. I was thinking he was from, like, Philadelphia or something, but that's pretty much the same thing, like, right there. But, um, because he goes to Mahoning a lot, so he was always saying, like, you know, maybe we can meet up at Mahoning and... Stuff and then I couldn't. I, I think he had said he was going to this convention, but I just forgot about it. And then it was one of those. It's weird when you see someone in person because you're like, is that that dude? Is that because you like see them in picture formats, and you're like, then you actually see them like walking around as a human being, and you're like, huh, that looks like that could be that dude. And we made eye contact, and then I turned around and he was looking at me again, and I was like, that must be dude. So then we talked to him for a little bit. Um, and we got a picture with him, and that was cool, because we, that's like the first time we ever really met up with anyone at a convention, so, and that was right after Rob and his son had just left, and, uh, so yeah, it was a pretty good, pretty good second day there, and then after that, that's when we decided we were going to go meet the peeps and whatnot, and we got our crap out of the car, and all our crap, our delicate whore hair items <laughs> to get signed, and... Uh, what did you, you brought... Actually, we, we, we talked to Michael, um, uh, why is his last name escaping me? Felcher. Um, what's that? Is it Felcher? Yeah, Felcher. Felcher. It's Felcher with a S-H. Okay. Um, but I talked to him, he was the guy who, he's produced special features for probably all your favorite releases, you know, Scream Factory, Blue Underground, uh... You know, anchor. He was a huge part of Anchor Bay, like the old school classic Anchor Bay, um, and of course, Arrow Video and Vestron. He does all the stuff for Vestron, and he. I talked to him. We talked to him for probably like half hour, forty five minutes or something. I'd say. Yeah. And I mean, I'm I not just, really familiar with him, but you, you and him had a good chat. Yeah, like, I reckon, I knew who he was, like, I, I remember the first time I, um, seen anything about him, it was when Scream Factory first came out, and he was, uh, he did, like, a little Q&A type thing, and it was just, it was, like, I think the only people in there was, uh, Chris Lax, um, mm-hmm. aka Critter Buster, and the dudes from Dead Pit, the creepy Kentuckian, and, um, that Vance dude, and I watched a Q&A that Chris uploaded to YouTube, and it was just, like, asking about titles and stuff like that. And um, ever since then, I, like, knew him, who he was. Like, I'm friends with him on Facebook, and he does live streams sometimes and talks about the stuff he's working on. Um, and I was like, 
yo, I know you. And I was like, Are, aren't you the red shirt pictures guy? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, hey, man, I'm a big fan of your work. And uh, I told him he should have a podcast because I think he talks really well and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and I think he has some interesting stuff to say and has all these stories from working in the industry so long and things. But it was so fun to pick his brain. I got some nugs and some interesting little tidbits about stuff coming up not anything specific but you know certain things that could be coming up in the future and even stuff that was going to be done by not Vestron and stuff like um so that was cool but I'm not going to say anything you know right now just because I don't want to be that guy who you know he didn't say anything specific either but yeah uh, either way uh the it was super fun so we went and met then we decided to go meet people um we started off with miguel nunez um a really cool guy um he had a lot of energy did you notice that about him oh yeah he's very high energy he's like he seems like he's still 20 years old or something like he's just yeah he was just like all about it you know he's like just all about like the the thing and he he kind of stole the show a little bit he was the guy that was like doing the biggest stuff Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, so I got, we got a picture with him, got him to sign my return of living dead poster. Cause I have, <laughs> I have like already three signatures on there. So I was like, I'm gonna just get this thing signed by people tonight. And, um, that was cool. And yeah, then he signed my Friday, he mm-hmm. signed my Friday box set. Cause I decided I'm going to start getting that bad boy signed. Um, I just brought the box. I didn't bring all the moves. but And he was like, you want me to write damn enchiladas on it? And I was like, yes. Of and course. Cool. I love his voice. He's just very, like, his voice is just very energized all the time. But. Yeah, I know. And, and I was telling you, like, he's done a ton of stuff. Like, he's been in, um... Mm. Like, yeah. Like a ton of like TV, all kind, of, all kind of stuff. Like he's been in a lot of stuff. Um, so after that, I think we did Lene Quigley, um, mm-hmm. which she was super nice, and we got a picture with her. And then uh, Tom Matthews, and I met Chuck from Return of the Living Dead. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think that was did that is that everybody we met. Yeah. And then, I think it was just the four. It's so expensive. It's so expensive to meet these people. Like, on one hand, I'm, like, super happy that they can make, like, a really good chunk of change to, to do these conventions. Mm-hmm. But on the other hand, it's like, man, if they were only, like, 20 bucks each, you could just meet everybody. You know what I mean? But it's like, yeah. it's rough, dude. It's hard to, you have to pick and choose. And then you feel, the thing that it, the thing that sucks about it is... Because you don't want to spend two thousand dollars to meet everybody, like you feel like you have to go with the ones you like, like the ones you like the most, which tend to be the most popular ones. So then the pe- real people that get screwed are like the ones that haven't really done much, or they've only done that like, like one little small part. Right. Because then you you just you know you don't feel like you have the budget to to spend on those guys too whenever like these big dogs are here you know so it's like those are the guys that get really screwed is the ones that like the the zombies from dawn of the dead or something you know Mm -hmm. (laughs) um like yeah it'd be fun to meet those guys and get autographs and stuff like that but it's like when linnea quigley's there and tom matthews and miguel nunez it's like the rest kind of like ah you know um, and there was a lot of people from Day of the Dead too, and I would have loved to meet some of those people and get stuff signed, but I had already spent like a couple hundred dollars just on autographs and pictures that I was like, uh, you know, I can't, I can't do Day of the Dead too because if I do one of the people from Day of the Dead, I got to do them all probably, or at least like three of them. Um, so I did, and um, but I would love to. I'm sure the cool thing about this convention is it seems like it's really about like the Romero stuff and like zombies and stuff. So I'm sure those people will be back in the future, um, provided nothing happens. Right. And uh, yeah, I, th- I would like to meet some of those people too. But it's it's rough, man. It's it's hard to pick and choose, and 
Um, it's so expensive. I think what was it, ninety dollars per person between us two? Yeah, yeah, for like the picture and everything. Because it was like forty dollars for an autograph for most of them, twenty for just a picture, and then fifty if you wanted both. So yeah, so yeah. you know that's a bit rough, but it's it's cool. I, I, I like being able to have the chance at least like nobody has to do it if you don't want to but mm -hmm. you know and you don't even have to do anything you just go up in line and talk to him if you want <laughs> you might be you might come off a bit of a dick like Alex um, <laughs> but, but you know uh, you could just go in line and meet them you don't have to buy anything but I just feel like it's good common courtesy to buy something or get something signed you know mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we also we also talked for a while with uh, the guy who made the barn. The director of the barn was right. There. Yeah, I totally forgot about him. Um, yeah. Justin Seaman, um, mm -hmm. which is funny because my name's Justin too, and yes. like he was like, "Who should I make this out to?" When he was autographing our copy of the barn. And I was like, you could write from Justin to Justin. <laughs> um, but no, it was uh, the first day we met him. I didn't know he was the director of the barn. He was working. He had a Scream Team releasing booth, which he's released like a couple of indie films and stuff like that. And and he, I was like, did you make any of these? And he said he made the barn. I also bought the sleeper off of him because I really like that movie. Um, it's a great indie indie. Uh, slasher film um it feels like it was made in the 80s like it it kind of reminds you of like house of the devil like how that movie feels mm. um it feels this one feels like a black christmas or something like that you know it, um yeah. but i bought that off of him on blu-ray and then he said he he directed the barn i told him this story about Ari Lam coming to the hotel after working on stuff with the barn um and that was really cool to be able to share that story you know what i mean and then I was like, well, we both own the barn. Um, if we bring a, a copy, you know, to you, would you sign it? And he said, yeah. And so we brought that the next day and he signed it and we talked to him for a little bit. And I gave him a business card and said, if you ever wanted to like do any promotion, we'd have him on the show. Mm -hmm. So we might have him on in, in the future at some point. Definitely not when we're recording at like 1 a.m. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we have to actually plan and not put off pause <laughs> if we want to do anything like that. Yeah, and also we did. Oh, there was a guy um, who. There's a silence of the the silence of the lambs Buffalo Bill House is located in one of our hometowns, like not our hometown, but like a town next to our hometown. It's like 20 minutes away from us, mm -hmm. um, in Periopolis, and somebody bought it and that thing has been on I, I think it's changed owners a few times but it's always for sale it seems like yeah and this horror fan must have bought it and it seems like he has an idea to sort of make it into like a tourist attraction sort of how like the texas chainsaw gas station is um down in texas like y you've heard about that right where they sell like barbecue and stuff like that and yeah you get there. Yeah. Kind of like that, and he's going to try to make it, you know, sort of like a, a overnight, you could stay in it type thing, which is pretty cool. And he even mentioned about possibly doing, like, screenings of it in the future, like, screenings of Sansa Lambs, like, out in the yard or something like that. Um, but it seems like he's going to try to turn it into, like, a little tourist thing. Um, so he was really out there like pimping that and stuff. And, and we, we told him we could have him on at some point too, to promote that, mm -hmm. um, which I want to do it. Do you want to do it? Yeah. And that yeah. guy seems interested. He seems very, like he's really dedicated and wants to get the word out. So I'm sure he would be down. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, anyway, uh, I think I think that's it and then we just what did we do the rest of the day you know went and talked to seven guys again yeah um anything I mean Linnea quickly was really nice as well she was super sweet mm -hmm. um the thing I will say is Tom Matthews doesn't really look or sound like Tom Matthews anymore to me no not at all like not a, it's so weird like 
legit not at all <laughs> how some of these pe some of these people just don't look like their youth whatsoever not just because of the gray hair and stuff it's just in the face i'm like it, it doesn't look like him yeah it's weird like he doesn't feel the same to me mm -hmm. um but I, I really like him he's awesome he's super funny and uh yeah i don't know sometimes it's like weird whenever i meet these people like I, I hate to just be that guy and be like, oh, I loved you in Return of Living Dead and Friday the 13th Part 6. You know what yeah, I mean? Shit. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, these people don't care. To, like, so does everybody else, you know? So I always try to, like, think of something, like, different to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes, like, I don't have anything. So I'm just like, hi, you know, nice to meet you. Thanks for coming. And that's it. I want to be brief. I don't want to take up, like, all their time and stuff like that. And I just want to get my shit signed. Mm -hmm. Um and sometimes, you know, like, I went and talked to freaking Chuck, who I didn't I don't even know who, what his real name is. <laughs> I, I completely forget. It it's like, like uh, something Feldman, Phil, Feldman yeah, or Phil. something. I forget, Carl? but like. No, not talk, no, that's his name, no. <laughs> not it at all. That's his name, that would be Chuck. <laughs> yeah, he's in Children of the Corn too as Amos, but um, I, I wasn't even going to meet him because I, I don't really know him from anything else you know i just know him from return of living dead but i was like ah hell i might as well get him to sign it and i went up and i ended up talking to him longer than any of them you know yeah, what i mean like, it, it was so stupid i just am sitting there talking to him about uh, the documentary and then his wife he's making fun of his wife because she doesn't like the movie and or you know she just seen it for the first time or something and you know, we're talking about that and Children of the Corn and how it was his first role. And then we started talking about Jewel Shepard, who um, plays uh, – who does – I forget what her name is um, in the movie. Uh, I can't remember what her name is, but I like Jewel Shepard a lot. She's been in a couple things too. And we were just talking. You know, she ended up having cancer, and I think she's in remission now and stuff. But, uh, yeah, it was – he looks a lot the same too, which is funny. He does, um, yeah. But yeah, we had a lot of fun, and that was uh, that was that was cool, you know. It, it, but it's like sometimes it goes like real smooth. Like, okay, um, what was what was the uh, Sh Sheridan? Oh um, yeah, David Sheridan. Dave Sheridan, um, David Sheridan, or whatever. When we met, I didn't even want to meet him. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you wanted to meet him, and I was like, I yeah. don't really even know anything about this guy. And you're like, he was in Hatchet. And I was like, which guy was he in Hatchet? And, you know, I like I like Scary Movie, but it's not, like, something that I'm, like, going to write home about. And, like, I love Devil's Rejects, but, like, I'm going to be honest. There's, like, 30 great characters in that movie, and, like, he's probably, like, at the bottom. <laughs> yeah, he's you not know? really, I mean, yeah. He's got um, the background. Right, but then we m walk up to him, and it was one of my funner experiences ever. Like, he was super nice, he's funny, we started talking about something random about, like, censorship and film and stuff, and he had stories to share. It's like, you never know, like, how the conversation's gonna go sometimes, and, like, I like when it's that organic conversation where it's just, like, really cool to, you know, just sort of have a few moments. Like, I don't want to be that guy that's like, oh, I love Friday the 13th. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I, yeah. I just, ah, uh, because I just know how I am, and I'm like, if I was in one of those movies and somebody told me they love Friday the 13th 800 times a day, like, yeah, it probably wouldn't be, I'd probably get very annoyed. Especially if that's your only movie. It's like, no shit, you loved me in that. Why are you in line? If you did, right. like, so, it's the only thing I did. Um, but we had a lot of fun overall. I I thought it was a, a good turnout. Like, it's not the biggest convention in the world. But it's definitely a, a it, it, the cool thing is you don't have to wait in line long. You know what I mean? Like I think yeah. Linnea quickly was the longest line. And it was what ten minutes. Yeah, I went fast. Yeah, and uh, I I like I liked meeting people. I felt like we were a little bit more social this time than the last couple times. Yeah. Uh, we went to anything. Um, I would probably say that this was. I still think Creature Feature from two years ago was my favorite convention. Yes, I this do. this is second. Um, but we might go to Creature Feature again this year. So we don't know for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, when is that? Is that in August? That's 
Yeah, that's August twenty, Shoot. like five, four or five, six, like something like that. Yeah. Twenty six. Yeah. We got to figure out what we're going to do there for sure. Um, we should probably book the hotel too soon if yes. we're going to go. I was kind of waiting to see when um, Camp Blood was – because I honestly, if I had to choose between those two things, I think I would pick Camp Blood. Yeah, it really depends on the people, creature I, – I don't know because I do want to go back to Creature Feature because it is in Gettysburg and I like that area too, but – yeah, Camp Blood is always a fun time, and I wonder if they will get other celebrity guests there. So it's like, it is a toss-up. I wish they would announce it, because they, they're kind of last minute when it comes to Camp Blood, announcing yeah. that one. And I'm hoping it's not the same weekend as Creature Feature, but who knows? Oh yeah, I actually wanted to talk to the Camp the Creature Feature guy, but I totally forgot. Oh yeah, yeah, because he was at the thing on the second day yeah but yes but yeah it was fun and I, I would agree I think this is probably my second favorite just because we met you know you met some listeners we talked to some we had some real conversations with people and it was just more engaging like it wasn't just like getting stuff signed and then going home after an hour mm -hmm. it was actually we made the most of our time and it was worth the money and the experience yeah. Yeah, it was good stuff. I enjoyed it. Yeah. All right, so... We, yeah. Then we anything else on that? Oh, yeah, we went and... Uh, it was fun, yeah, because we made a huge day out of it. Like, we went to my cousin's house and talked to him for a little bit. You got to meet him, yeah. um, who was really like a brother to me growing up. And then... Um, what else? Uh, then we went and hung out with my other cousin, who you know pretty well. And we went and basically just kicked it, right? Yeah. And watched some fireworks, drank some alcohols. Yeah, it was I good. Was like an it was a good time had by all. Am I right? Yes, you were right. Those are the best of times. Not yes. The worst of times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that was really fun. You, you got to meet like a lot of people that like. I'd probably never even mention just people that were from my hometown that, you know, just were all in the same place. And I haven't seen these people in years because I never get to go to these things anymore because I'm always working. It just worked out. But yeah, um, I think you were a little surprised at how many people we like knew um, in this little town. Yeah, I mean, like, I think it's the same where I live. I'm just, like, antisocial. I didn't, like, and my family is not very social. Like, my mom wasn't involved. Like, you know, we, we're just not very social people. So we're not the type where everyone knows each other. Like, Kate, like my friend Kaylee, for instance, her whole family, they go to the fire hall or something. It's like, hey, yeah, da, 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 da. but, like, <laughs> for me, it's never been that way. So it is, it's funny to me. Like, your Aunt Tammy, she's, like, standing there she's like oh I hate these things because everyone I'm trying to hide from people and I swear like 50 families came up to just her alone mm -hmm. and I'm like geez everyone's just so popular here but so cool. um the thing about uh the Mahoning drive-in by the way um so they have everything announced up to August 15th so literally the week the the week after mm -hmm. um I believe would be the 20 like the 27th you know what i mean so it's like it's either gonna be there or in september yes which i mean last year it was technically in september so who knows we'll was see. it yeah because it was labor day weekend was it like the first weekend of september yeah because that's what labor day is buddy september for wait first i believe I think it was like August going into September, so it's like it was technically. Yeah, see, I don't like that, man. I I wish yeah. they would do it like at the like middle of September or something, because like when it's back to back like that, it's om it's like really hard for me to get those off. You know, I yeah. it's almost like I feel like I'm being a douchebag if I go off like you know both those weekends. But it's like I don't know, man. I'm just trying to have fun. Yeah, me too. Um. Anyway. Let's uh let's uh move on here. Yes. 
They, I wish this theater, this drive-in was close to, closer to me because, man, do they have some fun stuff. Like, mm-hmm. dude, they have a Adventures in Babysitting and Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead Friday night. Like, come on. That would be so fun. Um, and then, like, Christmas in July Horror Edition, um, which has, like, three horror horror um, things. Yeah, that's pr- yeah. They always, I always look at their page, and I'm like, man. Yeah, like there's just so many cool things, like Dead Critters one and two. It's just like I don't. It's just too far. It's like five hours for us, but mm-hmm. um, I do, I do think it's awesome. Uh, so yeah, let's go into like the stuff that we watched. I guess. All right, all right. Who shall go first? Um, I'll go first. I guess. Uh, so, to just catch up, I guess I watched, like, um, a bunch of 2018 movies for the summer series, um, The House That Jack Built, which, uh, I think is really good, it's, it's a Lars von Trier movie, it's pretty, pretty, uh, out there, it's like a serial killer thing, which I always like serial killer things, but it's, got this like weird comedy beats to it this dark comedy that i like it's a good I, and i really like how the end plays out it's good stuff uh held up pretty well the ravager from 1970 this feels like a herschel gordon lewis movie um but but sucks but it's like a ripoff of herschel gordon lewis um basically this vietnam vet witnesses like a rape and it basically makes him go like like in Vietnam he witnesses rape and when he comes back to America it makes him go like insane and it's mostly shots of him crawling on the ground planting bombs on like unsuspecting couples making out and you know he's like he's like a crazy maniac who's like killing people I think it's supposed to suggest that like oh watching violence can make you violent and it's like stupid I don't know I I thought it kind of sucked I gave it like a three out of ten um then i watched crow haven farm this was a abc movie of the week um back in like 1970 uh it was a tv made for tv horror movie um it's kind of standard standard like haunted house type movie but there's some like witchy stuff involved with it too i thought it was pretty good it was pretty entertaining easy to watch i gave it a six out of ten uh then i watched lee winnell's upgrade this is sort of a sci-fi film, uh, revenge film mixed with a little bit of horror, and uh, yeah, it's um, it's a pretty good movie. Like basically, the, the this guy's like paralyzed from the waist, or, or fully paralyzed, I think, and uh, he gets this chip implanted into him that makes him like a super he- human type thing, um, and he goes on a killing spree type thing. It's pretty good. I enjoyed it. Um, Ghostland, um, 2018, this is a Pascal Lugier, Lugier movie, um, who directed Martyrs, and I think this one has a lot of cool themes like Martyrs had, and I think that it's a really good follow-up, uh, film, and it's a lot about trauma, I love how the story's told, um, I watched this once back in the day when it came out, and I, I definitely didn't pay attention to it enough. I'm kind of bullshitting my way through it a little bit. I even reviewed it. Probably bullshitting my way through that, too. (laughs) No, no. I mean, I watched it. I just... It didn't hit me as hard. I was burnt out on movies back then. Um, But, yeah, this time re-watching it, like... And, like, knowing where the story was going to go beforehand, it, like... It worked better for some reason. Um, But, yeah, this one... This one was definitely, like, a highlight of 2018 for the summer series um then i watched climax definitely still holds up loved it loved it loved it i think it's an incredible movie uh i just love how it made me feel i tell i talk about how our experience was in theater watching that it was such a good time Mm -hmm. and um yeah i love it it's like a nine nine and a half out of ten and then hereditary 2018 one of the goats one of the best horror films one of the uh of, of the decade in my opinion, I think that uh, Ari Aster handles, like, grief and depression, like, extremely well, like, almost too realistic. 
And I think it has some of the best acting you will see in a horror film. So Hereditary is boss. Uh, then I watched The Devil's Candy, which is a, a pretty fun, like, not really fun, but pretty good uh, little film about this, like, little rock family, like, metal family who um, buys a new house and the past the guy the guy who lived in there before is like crazy and goes after the younger daughter um i like the family dynamic the relationship between the father and daughter and stuff like that i do feel like the movie could have used a little bit more time to develop but i still think it's pretty good i just don't think that it's like as top tier as everybody else thinks this was a 2015 film for uh, the summer series that's the other year I got so I'm starting prep on that which I recorded this Sunday so I gotta go gotta go um, and then what else the devil's candy what else did I watch um, and then I watched deathgasm I watched this with Mo uh, Joe Bob Briggs for the last drive-in which I had watched that version before but I was like well if I'm gonna watch this I might as well do that version and yeah I love deathgasm it's super fun it's a New Zealand horror film, uh, black comedy, um, metalhead extravaganza. Uh, it's just good stuff, man. There's there's a slow motion dildo fight with, against zombies, yeah, <laughs> uh, or demons or whatever. Uh, I re I really just think it's a great movie. Um, then finally, I watched Green Room, which was probably my like fifth watch since it came out i absolutely love this movie it holds up every time i watch it i think it just kills the punk um aesthetic and like the realistic feel of like the punk things um i actually messaged my friend Lindsay after i watched it this time um an old friend of mine and was like hey have you ever seen this movie i think you'd really like it because like the way it handles like the punk stuff um, and she actually had seen it before and she said that she really liked it and stuff. So that was cool. But anyway, that's, uh, pretty much everything I watched. Um, I might've watched, um, something else, but I don't think I finished it. So, um, your turn. I'm going to go to sleep. <laughs> what? 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 Have some respect for me. Uh, no. You hate, you hate potting, I think. No, go ahead. All right. All right, so I watched first up Revenge from 2017, uh, also for the good old summer series prep, and uh, that is a great revenge film you can find on Shudder. Um, I really dug it the first time I saw it, uh, and I dug it this time around too. It held up really, really well for me. Um, you know, people have an issue with it because it's got this severely unrealistic part in it, but I think if you just kind of take it as like not realistic i guess per se like it's not supposed to be realistic um you know what i after like some time away from that movie and like to think about it it's definitely like this metaphorical like phoenix rising from the ashes type thing yeah so it, it makes sense i definitely accept it more than i did when i first watched it yeah i do too like i rated it really high when i first watched it but that part i was just like are you kidding me but watching it this time, I'm like, because there's a lot of other stuff in the movie that hints so that it's just a big sort of powerful metaphor. So uh, I was fine with it. Um, it's a great film. Uh, I love the, it's kind of like in this deserted setting. And all you really have is like this girl and these three guy characters. There's really not many actors in the movie. Um, it's super bloody at times, super a few cringe, like gross out moments in it. And uh yeah, it's great. It's one of those ones where you can't look away. It's one where, you know, I would get up to get a drink or something. I didn't want to, I had to like pause it because I actually wanted to watch it all because it was really good. So yeah, I really enjoy that one. Um, then after that, I watched Friday the 13th Part 5 from 1985 because um, it's just uh, part of a little thing we're going to do on Slumber Party Massacre. We're not reviewing the franchise. It's going to be part of our... Uh, what you call it, pillow fight segment, so I decided to give these a rewatch, gave me an excuse to get into my box set and watch the move, um, and Friday Five is a movie I love, um, it's actually probably at the top, my favorite Friday the 13th film I've said before, um, 
you know, some people don't like it, some people love it, and I love it. I think it has the most memorable characters in it, and um, I just always have a really fun time with it. So, uh, yes, that is Friday 5. Then I also watched Friday the 13th, Part 7, 1988. And uh, that one, I always kind of went back and forth on. Uh, sometimes I really liked it. Sometimes I really wasn't in the mood for it. Um, this time around, I enjoyed it. Uh, I love, I think Jason looks the best in this. I love the effects on him. I actually find him very terrifying looking in this. Um, as a kid, it scared the crap out of me. And it still kind of spooks me, so that's cool. Um, and there's just, there's good stuff in it. I, I think it's got solid moments i think I, I think the characters are a little weak you know at the party next door but um other than that i i still have a good time with it i like some of the kills and some of the just the, the fact that it's like in the woods still and everything like that but so that's friday 7 then i watched friday 13th part 8 cool blue gate 1989 and part eight is another one well it's one that i grew up watching i had it on vhs i watched it a lot growing up surprisingly um i probably watched this one the first one the most which is kind of weird but uh part eight i think has a lot of really really bad stuff in it but i still find it entertaining i definitely enjoy the parts on the boats better than when they actually get to quote unquote manhattan um when they get there, I think it's actually kind of laughable. Some just the way they're kind of walking around in the middle of like the shitty alleys of the city, and uh, just some of the way things are handled. Like characters just get killed, and then they just walk away like that didn't even happen. And then by the end of the movie, they're just like, "Yay, we're we're all saved!" But like all the people are dead. Um, so yeah, part eight. It's not a great movie, but I have a lot of nostalgia for it. Then after that, I watched Jason Goes to Hell from 1993, and I uh, am not a big fan of Jason Goes to Hell. I know that my buddy is a big fan of it, and I've tried yeah, to... Yeah, because it. it's so great. I don't understand what you don't like about it. It's horrible. Um, it's it's like, not horrible. What don't you like? I was. It's not a Friday the 13th movie, and it's annoying, and I don't want to hear, oh, that this was a, just a Vinegar Syndrome release, and it was just some cool monster movie. Everyone would have loved it. This yeah, was if, it was, if it was called, like, like uh, body swapping, body swap of terror or something, people would be like, man, body swap of terror is so crazy. Like, it's just a weirdo movie. Like, yeah, and I, I said it. I didn't want to hear this. I thought you said you wanted to. No, I said I don't want to hear the stupid argument you give a lot. Um, <laughs> it's a good argument. Don't. No. Don't, is it? It's, it's just like, it's just stupid. And it's like, I was watching this and I was just kind of depressed because I'm like, you know, we haven't had a Friday the 13th movie in a long time and we might never get one again. And I'm thinking, I always think like, well, at least, you know, we got like 12 of them. Like, we can't be complaining too mm -hmm. much. But yeah. But to me, it's like we got ten because they made two like total shit unwatchable ones. Yeah, and it just depresses me. Yeah, only Jason X really. It's like eleven we got. Yeah, we got like ten. Um, then after that, I watched... no. But like Jason goes to hell. Like you're telling me, you're telling me, you're gonna go ahead and sit there and tell me that when Jason doesn't jump out of the floor at the end of the movie and he's like. <sighs> Yeah, that's and what everybody's that's... scared as shit. You're telling me that's not amazing? That's depressing too. All right, you're gonna sit there. You're gonna sit there and tell me. You're gonna sit there. You're gonna sit there and tell me that when the beginning of the movie starts and the chick gets all naked and it's like, oh, this is like classic Friday the Thirteenth. Jason shows up and she's running through the woods and you're like, oh shit, you know, opening kill. And then all of a sudden these fucking spotlights come on and it's like. <laughs> And Jason's just standing there like, what the fuck's going on? And then just like... And then a grenade comes in, it's like... And you see Jason's head go, and you're like, uh, what the fuck? What the fuck? What? Hold on. Wait, did Jason just die? Like, what's going on here? This is a little weird way to open the movie. I didn't expect this. You're telling me that's not awesome? No. That's and then really... you're telling me... And then you're going to tell me... You're going to tell me that Creighton Duke shows up and you're not like this fucking guy is the coolest dude ever put on screen you're telling me no. you're telling me that's not awesome wait i'm not saying i haven't gotten the chance to tell you anything <laughs> why 
because you keep interrupting me saying, are you going to tell you're me? And you're then tell you're telling me when uh, Jason, uh, one of Jason body doubles comes into the uh, the restaurant and he fucking elbows that annoying bitch in the face and her mouth's all like, rum, rum, rum. you're telling me that's not awesome? <laughs> like stupid. I don't know, dude. It's just like. Um, not an awesome... Like, yeah, the part... Jason parts, Burgers? You're telling me Jason Burgers aren't awesome? Buddy, I want to get on with this. Like, the part... It's a horrible film, and you're pretty much highlighting the fact that the parts with Jason are the best part. So, like... Yeah, of course they are. But what right. I'm saying is, like, okay, you got to put yourself in perspective here, right? We've had eight Jason films. We've had Jason on our screen for such a long time. Yep. And... Like, okay, they were getting kind of stale. It's like Jason versus Carrie, Jason on a boat, Jason in um, uh, Vancouver, you know? It's like, what are you going to do next, you know? Like, how do you go up? What are we going to take him to space? No, that's dumb. So what you do is you're like, okay, well, let's just take him away. Let's just, like, take him away for a minute. And so you take him away, and then... But you take him away in the most epic way possible where you're like, you wouldn't ever expect the movie to open with Jason dying. Like, what? That's crazy. Who would ever do that? And then right when everybody, like, wants him the most, you give him back. And you get this fucking amazing epic moment of him back. And you're like, oh, shit. Jason's back. That's right, motherfuckers. He's coming to chop all your heads off. Like, he's gonna fuck some shit up now. And then you have him, like, mess... You have him, like, attack dude where, like, the birds was filmed. And it's pretty cool. So, I'm just saying. It's a pretty fucking dope movie, if you ask me. If you fucking ask me, it's pretty dope. <laughs> You're so stupid, dude. Like, and then, like... Like, yeah, they needed him most, because they were sitting there thinking, like, wow, this mood sucks. I wish so bad they didn't kill off Jason. Like, yeah, no, he pretty much you pretty you don't get it. it. Like, it, you take him away, and then it makes people want him a lot more. Like, I do wish that the end sequence was a little bit longer. Like, if it was, like, you know, 25, 30 minutes of getting Jason back, I think that probably would have sat with people a little bit better. Yeah, Um yeah. I like the mythology they create. Like, okay, why why his why have we killed Jason like thirty times and he's never died? And it's like, oh well, only a Voorhees can kill him. Kill him. It's like if you really want him like dead, dead, then a Voorhees has to do it. And it's like, why? It's like, well, because the Voorhees bloodline clearly has something up with it to where it it you know does it, look at Jason. Like, look at him. Like, how did he get like that? You know what I mean? How can he keep coming back to life? It's like. Okay, well, there has to be some, like, either voodoo shit going on, some magic shit going on, or some, like, mysterious shit going on. It's like, oh, what about this old creepy-ass house where the Necronomicon's hiding at? Like, okay, this could be hinted at, like, okay, this has something to do with why he can't die. Um, and, yeah, I just think that, like, okay, by, like, not, it's, it's, like, by, like, nine sequels, dude, it's, like, okay, yeah, nothing you say is gonna really make much sense, so it's, like, at least we can try to explain some of this shit by this point and it's like that's that's what they came up with and i'm like all right it's not perfect but it's better than fucking jason just comes back to life over and over again how's that a better explanation he comes back to life through getting shocked by lightning at convenient times buddy <laughs> exactly you're telling me that's like fine but i just like i want to see jason kill hookers in the woods like i don't want to see stuff like that's different. I don't. But yeah, anyway. but by this point, everybody's seen that. So m you got to understand, dog. This isn't like th these are. This is these. There was like ten of these in ten years. You know I what do I understand, mean? It's dog. Like, it's like, yeah. Now, if we got a new Jason film and it was Jason goes to hell, we'd be pretty pissed off because we're like, what? I just wanted my old Jason back. But it's like you had your 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 old Jason didn't leave. You had him the whole time. So it's like you got something different this time. It's like you, you, everybody. We just been getting the same fucking movie over and over again for nine years. It's like okay, let's do something different. It, I could understand if it's been a thirteen year gap or a fourteen year gap or however long it's been, and then you get Jason goes to hell. You're like, what the fuck is this shit? I wanted just Jason back, but it's like you already had Jason there the whole time. So it's like, you know, you get what I'm saying. No, I don't, dog. 
<laughs> Why are you mad, bro? Because, bro, like, I'm just saying, where's Look, my I just think that you're, like, I, I here's what it comes down to, right? The people that don't like Jason Goes to Hell, they, like... They have small brains. Like, they're not big-brained enough to understand how it actually is cool. No, I just don't want to... Listen! <laughs> like, okay, anyway, after that, I watched Jason X, which also which fucking sucked. sucked. It's the worst one. And that's what I hate, too. People like, Jason... Jason... I, I, I don't... I, I, I hate Jason Goes to Hell, but Jason X, like, that's just cheesy fun. And I'm like, it's cheesy trash. It's not good. <laughs> Like, it, like Jason goes to hell at no point are you watching that, and they're like, oh, these people aren't trying at all. No, they're all trying to act and make the best part in this movie. Like, Jason X, you feel like, oh, these people know that they're making some stupid fucking space movie, and they're all acting like they're making some stupid cheesy space movie. And it's, like, super annoying, and... Uber Jason, everybody's like, oh, Uber Jason is so damn cool. And I'm like, why? He looks like plastic. Everything about it looks plastic. It's like, he's, okay, he had a plastic hockey mask on when he was like, you know, or fiberglass or whatever, or carbon fiber, whatever the fuck it was um, in the first movies. But it's like, this is supposed to be metal Jason, but why does everything still look plastic? Oh, because it is plastic. And it's like, why did why why didn't they get a good fucking effects guy to make it look metal instead of plastic? It looks like plastic, damn it. And it doesn't even make sense. Like how would how would the regeneration process upgrade thing know to give him like a hockey mask looking uh, replica type thing? It doesn't make any sense. That movie sucks, dude. Uh, like I appreciate it sometimes and I do even like it even though I think it sucks. Um and I like certain things about it, but it's definitely the worst Friday the Thirteenth. It's so, it's so, it, like I would never want want want, want the series to go in further in that direction. You know what I mean? It's just complete tongue in cheek. And Friday the Thirteenth was never tongue in cheek, really. It never was. You know, it was never like, oh, we know we're making a Friday the Thirteenth film here, and the, and they're just they're just. Uh, you know, we don't take them seriously and stuff. It's never been that. And that's why Friday the 13th was kind of cool, you know, is because it's like they just try to make a good movie every time. Yeah, so I'm not a big fan of Jason X, um, and it sucks. Um, after that, um, I watched Friday the 13th, 2009. And this one, I, again, kind of go back and forth on, um... I'm not a huge, huge fan of it, but I still... What? 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 I'm not a huge mega fan of it, but I still do like it. What? Um, what? Of what? What do you Friday mean? Sir, what? I said asking? of what, like, seven times. The movie? Yes! I already said Friday the 13th, 2009! Okay, but I didn't hear you when you said that. Like, dude. That's why no, I said what? I'm trying to go through these. I want your opinion on this. Like, well, just the thing, okay, listen. The thing about the remake, right? What happened like, to the it, nap you were going to take? Huh? You were going to say, you said you were going to take a nizzle and then snored. What happened to that? Oh, uh, you t started talking about something that I'm in love with. <laughs> but, um, I think the remake is, like, good at times. Like, I like things about it. It's like, I want... It's like, you look at the movie, and you're like, okay, I love the Halloween remake. I love Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake. Um, I wish they remade Elm Street, and I could love it, but they did never make, remake it. So, like, then you look at Friday the 13th, and you're like, man, like, on paper, I should love this. Like, I don't know why I don't, but it's just, like, something about it. I just don't love it, but I do... I want to. Yeah, I, I agree, kind of. Um, yes. There is stuff about it that I do like, but then there's just stuff that I'm like, ah, I don't. It doesn't... Like what? Like, I don't like... The like underground the, cavern? Yeah, I don't like that. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Like, what is that? Like, it reminds me of TCM2, where they're just, like, underground and nothing. Yeah, but TCM2 was, like, pure comedies like ridiculousness so it, it was okay but like yeah. jason like you wait you you want me to believe that he either dug this out or there was these already existed yeah it's like it's too perfect. It, what, what they tried to do was like 
it tried to explain how Jason could just like tell like how it it always seemed like he could just teleport through the woods like he was just be he'd be walking and then be ahead of someone yeah um so that was their explanation it's like oh there's these underground tunnels and i'm like that's just stupid man what are you doing what are you what are you doing like that's if i got that script and i started reading that i'd be like what are you doing what are you <laughs> doing here what are you doing with this yeah you know but nobody said that right and the fact that he kept the girl. I hate that. I would have read that and I've been like, what are you doing? What are you trying to do with this? And then you would have been fired for questioning <laughs> No, them. I'm the guy that, that pays them to write the script is in this scenario. Hey. So I'd be like, I'd fire them. I'd be like, what are you doing here? Like, have you read this? Oh, you wrote it? Well, have you read it after you wrote it? And then they'd be like, yeah, I read it. And I'd be like, well, go read it again. And write it again because th this is stupid. Jason's not gonna, and Jason's not gonna capture some girl and hold her captive. And he'd be like, "Well, the, in in Friday the Thirteenth Part Two, Amy's still dressed up like his mom, and he stopped and he was confused, and and it's kind of like that." And I'd be like, "No, it's that's different. He was confused for a second. He didn't like take her and like raise her as one of his own. Like it's ridiculous." Yeah. Damn. Yes. <laughs> stupid. Yes, well, you pretty much nailed it, buddy. That is... I agree. And I don't really like the characters in the movie all that much either, so... That kind of rings it, too. Like, what douche... Like, the, the, no one acts as douchey as that guy, the, the main... What's his name? Like, fucking... The guy who says the girl's boobs are stupendous or whatever. <laughs> yes. Cabin. Yeah, he's, he's definitely douchey, but, like, I feel like I know people douchier than him. Well, and then that other guy's like an Owen Wilson, like, young brother looking thing. And they're, they're all just so annoying. I don't know. But Yeah, it's like I want to love the movie. I just can't. It's just, I, I like it. I'm okay with it. I just can't love it. And it is, it, it is what you asked for. It's just another Jason movie. It's what you w wanted when you got Jason Goes to Hell. But it's not the I don't know buddy it's no, like you movie. said you wanted Jason out in the woods killing hookers and that's what this movie is well they're not necessarily hookers well they're not not hookers either so shut up dude okay <laughs> I, I like Friday the 13th shut up see this is why I can't meet Friday the 13th people because I would just walk up to them and be like I like Friday the 13th <laughs> <laughs> they'd be like that's really nice Justin who am I signing this to? Okay. They would look at you and be like, they'd be like, this is so nice of you to bring him out here. Yeah. <laughs> is he from Make-A-Wish? <laughs> oh, buddy. <laughs> um, but no, like, you know, dude, they should have a Friday 13th Part 9 reunion. No, they shouldn't. Anyway, um... So then I watched the final girl. You're still watching movies? You're not letting, like, you ran through you your so quick. You just took forever on like, this. Like, clearly you're reviewing all, have you noticed I just keep moving on? Like, I don't even add comments because you keep reviewing every film? I Hello? thought you would have been done by now. No, I'm trying to get through these. Well, you're taking forever. No, I'm not. You are. How am I? They're your reviewing my movies. They're your movies. movies. You're reviewing the movies that I watched! Listen! So then after that I watched The Final Girls 2015, which we will have a full review on on Slumber Party Mastix. But I do like this movie, I will say that. Then after that, I watched The Lodge 2019, and it was the second time watched for me since we saw it in the theater, and um... What? what? I was just gonna say, how's that? I've never seen it. <laughs> What? The Lodge? Yeah. Are you dumb? The Lodge. Hello? Are you dumb? Which is The Lodge? I'm trying to think what it is. Well, can I explain? Uh, do you want me to go into it? Oh, okay. The effing movie that we watch. The what? Are you kidding, dude? Like the freaking Lodge from tw like the one with they're in the snow and the lot at the Lodge and the woman. Oh yeah, 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 yeah! I know that movie. Yeah, okay. 
Um, but it's good. It's a good film. Very good acting, and uh, it's definitely pretty has kind of that just feeling of doom throughout it and dread and has really good atmosphere and like I said it's got like some of the best kid acting I've seen in quite a while um and it definitely held up and I think I might have liked it more around more so this time around than when we saw it in the theater or when I guess I saw it in the theater so that was that and then after that I watched Scary Stories of Tell in the Dark from 2019 and uh, that one has fantastic aesthetic and it's I think it's great to watch around Halloween time. Obviously it is the summer but whatever um, and I hope they make more of these because I think it's I think there's a lot of potential to make some more of these films but I really dig it. I think the performances are good, and uh, the effects of the, you know, animated monsters are good. And I think it's a good one to, like, show kids for sure, because it's not too over-the-top. But that's that. And then finally, tonight I watched I Know What You Did Last Summer in 1997, because it was the 4th of Jalizzle, and um, I really like I Know What You Did Last Summer. Some people think it sucks, but I love it. I grew up on it, and it's very nostalgic for me, and I just find it very watchable. It's another one where I can't look away from the screen even though I've seen it a million times. And uh, yeah, it's always got a special place in my heart. So that's how I watch. Alright, well let's uh, move on here to the featured review of 2021's The Forever Purge, which is the fifth damn purge movie can you believe there's freaking five of these already like what is this um the first one came out in 2013 so literally five in what seven years Uh that makes me sick because here's the thing right yeah we were just talking about how we haven't had a friday 13th since 2009 right What's that? Uh, that is... 11 years? That's 12 years. 12 years? We haven't had a Friday 13th in 12 years. 12 years. 12! Yeah. And we had five Purge movies in seven. Yeah. At this pace, we're going to have 10 Purge movies by the time... We're going to have, like, 10 Purge movies by the time we get another Friday 13th movie. <laughs> Yeah. It's ridiculous, dude. So ridiculous. Anyway, this is supposed to be the last one. Mm-hmm. Because the last the last one was the first one. Mm-hmm. The first Purge. Mm-hmm. But really, it was the last one before this. Correct. Yes. Um, the Purge came out in June 2013. And then we got a sequel the next year with The Purge Anarchy in 2014. Did we see that one together? No, we didn't know each other then. Are you sure? In 2014? Yeah. I was in high school. And I think that would have been weird. Yes, it would have. Because <laughs> I was like 20. No, um, like 23, but okay. And then we saw the purge election year. Did we see that one together? Uh, I think so, yeah. Okay. And then that was 2016. And then 2018, the first Purge. Yes. We saw that one together. And then last year was supposed to be the Forever Purge 2020. Um, So it would have been like, you know, it seemed like an every two year type thing at that point. Yeah. Um, So there was also a Purge TV series that lasted one season, which is weird. Because, like, I feel like nobody really talks about it. Um, So... What do you what, what is the plot synopsis on this? All the rules are broken as a sect of lawless marauders decide that the annual purge does not stop at daybreak and instead should never end. Yeah, so this one is like it's basically if they just decided to not keep doing the pur- like to not stop the purge. Yeah. And it sucks. Right. 
Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so it's, yeah, they decide that they're going to, basically they have, like, their, you know, purge, and then they're like, we're going to keep on purging, and it's like a group of just people who, I guess, banded together and were like, forever purge, they keep saying, like, forever, ever, or something really stupid, and it's just. I don't know, this movie's like sucked. It was like an action movie too. It was barely a purge film. It was just the whole film's just a bunch of people like walking around in the streets with guns and like trying to get away from the people purging and then like a bunch of fire in the streets and then they're like, We need to like flee to like some like Mexico and Yeah, stuff. because because right, it's like Mexico is opening its borders for the US because they're in trouble. Yeah, yeah, right, right. <laughs> yeah. Like, you get it? You get it? Yeah. It's like, wouldn't it be nice if you guys did that for us? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, okay, so first of all, I mean, these movies are all political. I feel like the last couple have been, like, way more political than than the first one. Mm-hmm. Even though the first one still had a little bit of that, these, these last ones have been very, very, very political. Um... I expected this movie to literally be uh, white people hunting Mexicans, uh, <laughs> but it, they actually didn't quite do that. So I do give them props for for at least being not so like white people are evil. You know what I mean? Um, and I'm I'm coming from a weird place here because I am both white and Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is very awkward to watch with my buddy because I know some of the things that were being said were probably very painful for him to hear in the move. Because and, of Mexican? Yeah, it was like a big elephant in the room. I had to keep looking at you and saying, it's okay, buddy, it's just a move. Like, don't take what they're saying serious. Shut up. Um, <laughs> but, so yeah, I, ex- I honestly expected it to literally just be like white people killing Mexicans. Like, I thought that that's where it was going. But, you know, there's some good white people in there, too. And, and there's some, you know, there's some good there's some good people in there, even though that, like, there's some evil people, too. Um, my thing with the Purge movies, and it just, it drives me so bonkers with the Purge movies. Like, it just annoys me so much. Like, these movies are played 100% serious, not any sort of, like, exploitative like sort of um you know uh ridiculousness like not intentional ridiculousness not like hobo with a shotgun or something right like not like that um yet at least the last ones and even this one a little bit like with the bunny rabbit costumes and the like glowing eyes and stuff like that and like the sort of like like reveling in their costume madness type things that goes on it almost it always feels like these movies want to be exploitation films but they just don't so it's like you can't have it both ways you can't sort of tease that stuff and then pull back on it and be like a serious movie it doesn't work you either have to go full force exploitation where people are like dying and getting fucking stomped in the streets like throughout the whole movie and just just murder and mayhem and violence or you make this heady bullshit that you know that doesn't have any of that you can't have it both ways and i will say this one had less of that like exploitation flair than the last two or three so i was like less mad about that but one of the things that like drives me crazy about the purge movies is like nobody acts like real people which is fine if you're making an explanation exploitation film because it's like, okay, I don't really expect people to act like people in pure exploitation because it's like, it, you know, everything's absurd and, and over the top and ridiculous. But, like, in these movies, it's supposed to be grounded in reality. Why Why is it that everybody's getting picked up to take to this safe place an hour before the purge? Like, that would never happen. Like, people would, like, literally spend, like... 48 hours in their house before the purge even starts because they ain't taking no chances you know what i mean it's so unrealistic the way these films are portrayed 
it drives me nuts. Like, I get so annoyed because I'm like, nobody would do this. Nobody would be walking down the street right now after the purge. Like, even after the purge ended, people would still be like, you know, just to be safe, I'm going to stay in an extra 24 hours. You know what I mean? Like, why would anybody leave and go back to anything except for maybe the people that, like, have to work? Or whatever, but like most people are gonna be like, yeah, I'm gonna wait till they clean up all the dead fucking bodies from outside. That was is gonna take a week. You know mm. what I mean? Like <laughs> nobody acts like real people, and it drives me fucking bananas in all these movies. That's why I was never able to get into them because it's like Dave says, right? Like Dave Parker, if you have a movie that is playing itself serious, then you expect everybody in the movie to act rational and when they don't it makes it that much worse like he can accept if people are acting stupid in a stupid movie you know but when it's a, a film like the purge it's supposed to be this serious political message film it, it's it's frustrating because nobody acts nobody acts like a real human being in in here and even like even like the conversation that the one dude was having about like um well, I don't think white people are necessarily better than Mexicans. I just think we should stick to our own kind. <laughs> like, Cringe. even that didn't... I've heard people say things like that, and it never sounded like that. Like, it sounded so fake and forced and bullshit, like it wasn't a real organic conversation. Like, ew. It just, it just drives me crazy, because I'm like, I've literally heard people say that exact thing. And it sounded nothing like this conversation, you know what I mean? And it's, like, annoying to me. And also, like, the fact that, like, oh, th this uh, Mexican chick and this black dude, they get attacked by these purge people in a fucking saw trap that's outside. And, you know, the, the they, they get the upper hand and they kill these people. But then the police show up right then and they're like, oh, minorities holding guns and dead bodies you guys definitely did this you know forgetting the fact that like okay the purge just happened you're hearing about things about the purge not ending like you know it, 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 there's this clearly there's this fucking group out there that has this almost swastika looking logo that was even you know it ain't like they just came up with this logo overnight like it's clearly an established like group um, because they got it painted on their trucks and stuff like that. Like, it's it's something that probably existed for a while. Um, you know, you got all this going on. And, of course, the police arrest these two minorities right away. Because why? Because you know for a fact that, that you know, the minorities did it because they're minorities. And it's like, okay, that's stupid. But then I know the message is, well, that's what happens in real life. Because police will just, you know... Um, automatically assume it's the black person who did the crime and it's like oh my god this is so and it's like so it's so like in your face and like you know it, it's so just cringe to me it's cringy to me is it cringy to you do you just feel like it's like they think they're doing something they're saying some important message that that is like hasn't been said yet it's like no dude everybody talks about this it's like yeah. you're not doing something and it's not done in a creative way where it's like like Carpenter or Romero or something. There's not all this subtext. It's just like so in your face. It's like, yep, police bad. Uh, they automatically, you know, assume these minorities killed these people. Oh, but but here's the problem. They throw logic out the window and that's and it makes it feel unbelievable because it's like any rational police officer. I don't care if they're um, have bias or not if they see these fucking people covered in these purge costumes with glowing red rabbit fucking bunny co costumes in the middle of the day with a saw trap they're gonna have some more questions there than just like oh they did it you know what i mean they're gonna be like what the hell's going on here you know and it's just like when you take that away and you remove the logic then it's hard to believe the message. Now, if they questioned everything and, you know, it was done uh, differently and you, you could show some, some biases, the way they asked the questions or whatever, but when you completely strip these people of any type of logic at all, it makes it unbelievable. It makes you not, not want to 
even hear the message out because you're like, you're just feeding me bullshit here. You're just making it so over the top that it's hard to believe. And, and I don't like that. Right. Yeah. I mean, that whole part's annoying. Cause it's like, even when they pull up, they're like, what are you guys doing? The purge is over. It's so poorly done. Uh, and they just start right. handcuffing them and they don't even <laughs> do anything about the bunny costume, but people yeah. just put them in the car. But yeah, it's cringy to me. Um, these movies are annoying. I even remember, like, when the first, you know, when the very original one was coming out, everyone in school was like, oh, this movie looks like it's going to be so cool. It's like a movie where like, every crime is legal for 24 hours or 12 hours, whatever, however many hours. Dude, and I thought it was genius. I was like, this is going to be the greatest idea ever. Every, well, yeah, that's what annoys me. Everyone thought that, and I think people still do that because there's, like, <laughs> such a good turnout for these, and it's like, but it's never... Yeah, like, our the theater movie. was packed. Yeah. And you know what's funny? It was mostly, like, I would honestly say it was mostly, like, black people there. Yeah, I think I think these movies are a big hit in the black community. Mm. But... Yeah, it's just so stupid because the concept, the actual idea was good, and then they just kept making them more and more po political. They're like, this is what the people want. But the thing that sucks is I love politics in my movies. I really do. Like, I like Jordan Peele is great. He's great. He His messages are so, like, subtle, but they're there. And the more you look into them, the more you, like like understand them and, and believe them and stuff and and even if you don't believe them they're still they're still presented to you in an interesting way like i've always said like i don't care what your political message is if i am completely on the opposite side of it it's all about how you present the message that's all i care about do you have a good argument for your message do you have a good um delivery mechanism for your message it does the message is irrelevant it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if the message is, you know, fucking don't eat meat or if it's, you know, uh, don't be a, a scumbag human being rapist. You know what I mean? Like, it, whatever the message is, it doesn't matter. It just matters how you present it and how you tell me your message. Because I don't need, like, your, like I, it doesn't matter if I agree with your message or not. I'm still interested in hearing your message, you know, mm -hmm. and that's how I've always felt with um, movies. And I just feel like these fucking purge movies are literally like the worst at delivering messages. They're truly awful. And the, the worst thing about the forever purge is it's so boring. All the other ones, ever, all four of the other ones, once I got past the annoyance of the messages and stuff, I still ended up being semi-entertained with just, like, the crazy shit they were doing. And I think I gave, like, all of them between, like, a 6 and a 6.5, even though I think they're, like, bad, mo like, messages and the way that they're done is, like, kind of bad. I still think they have an entertainment level to them. This one had not none of that. It was just boring from fucking start to end, pretty much. Yeah, but it just felt like nothing was going on, and then, you know a movie's bad if I get up and go to the bathroom, and then I, like, take my time in the bathroom and hope that the movie is, like, closer to the end by the time I walk back into yeah, the theater. Yeah, this was my least favorite theatrical experience this year, so yeah. far. But, and we yeah. saw a lot so far, you know. This sucked. Yeah. What was that movie, The Thriller, that we watched right at the beginning of the year? With, like, the, the black dude and the uh, cheating on. Cheating on. <laughs> that was way more entertaining than this. <laughs> yeah, I forgot we I forgot that was even this year <laughs> that we yeah. saw that. Dude, I don't know, man. These This one is... I just think this one sucks. Like, I, I, I mean, I think that this franchise in general is one of the worst franchises out there. Um, especially, like, mainstream franchise. Like, obviously, if you watch, like, damn... I don't know, like, Hobgoblins or something, that franchise is going to suck. Mm -hmm. But, like, this, for, like, being a mainstream franchise, I think it's, like, the worst. <laughs> yeah. I just I just think it sucks, dude. I don't know, man. I, they, these movies just frustrate the ever-living hell out of me. Like, I just watch them mad the whole time, and I'm just like, mm, <laughs> mm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I'm just like, oh, it's so cringy, dude. Like, stop being cringe as hell, man. Like, 
and I listen to these people who make these movies and they think they're like saying something so important. It was like when we watched the wrong turn behind the scenes thing and I was like, oh my God, this guy thinks he's fucking saying the most profound shit ever because he like figured out that, you know, uh, people shouldn't judge people. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? It's I, like, uh, yeah. Welcome to the club, buddy. I agree. I All right. Agree. Well, what do you want to rate this bad boy? I was um, kind of sad because I know that Brian and Jamie posted their review and they both liked it. <laughs> oh, did they? Yeah. Oh, so sorry. But I, I don't, I don't know. I'd probably give it a three and a half out of ten. Three and a half out of ten. Woof. That's a rough one, huh? Three yeah, I don't... What do you mean, woof? Like, dude, it's not that good of a movie. Um, what am I thinking? Uh... I give it a four. Woof? What a... That's a rough one, buddy. I'll give it a foul. All right. I just wanted to read one letterbox thing. This person left a review. That, all it says is, that cowboy purge bitch on the poster wasn't even really a character in this. I think that's funny. I guess you would have to see the poster to find it funny. Yeah, you know. Um, man, dude. I don't know. That movie just was, like, not for me. Um, what do we got next? Let's see. It, today is the 5th. Um, when is good old Shark Week? Uh, like... The, seven, the 12th? Does it start the 12th? I think, maybe. Probably. Yeah, the 11th through the 17th. Okay, so, yeah. um, I mean, should we just get into Shark Week next next episode? Should we should we or should we try to squeeze one more in? No, let's just get into Shark Week. Shark Week. Yes. All right, Shark Week 2021. First yes. time. Sharks. I mean, second time. <laughs> You're stupid. <laughs> Yeah, so we're going to do Shark Week. I can tell you right now, I have some shark films. I have, uh, I've just picked up Deep Blood recently, but I reviewed that one last year, I think, too. So, I don't uh, know. Yeah. It? Um, Cruel Jaws. I also got uh, Titan, Titan, Terra. Actually, I only got like two shark movies, but <laughs> I tried. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so with that said, I guess we will see you guys next time. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. It was fun. I hope you're recording because I literally forgot to record again. Come on, dude. Yes, I'm recording. But... Okay. Yeah. Um, your your actual recording sounds better than mine anyway, so maybe we should just use yours for now on. It's only the Skype recording. I know. All right. I know. All right, and uh, that's episode 66. We'll see you guys next week with episode 69, 67, 67. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Shark Week. Yes. 2021. Sharks. Sharks. What, that means we're going to have quite a bit of time to prep for Shark Week because we probably won't record it until like the, you know, 15th or something. Yes. Sharks. Yes. Shark Week. Sharks. Yes. All right. We'll see you guys next time. Peace. Bye.